What's going on guys? In this video, we're looking at some tricks for adding a retro 80s flavor to drums. I'm gonna show you some simple ways to get gated plate reverb snares, delayed claps, bigger kicks and toms, and overall wider, more 80s influenced sound. I'm also leaving a link for you to download this plugin chain for Studio Rack free over at waves.com slash 80s drums. Let's not waste any more time. Take a listen to these drums before and after the 80s treatment. Here's the before. and after. Instantly much wider and fuller, definitely has that 80s vibe and energy, and all within this chain of five plugins. So let's dig right in. Starting off with probably the most iconic drum sound of the 80s, the gated plate reverb effect. Now you can do this on just about any snare. For this one, I have a Lin LM1 snare sample with an Oberheim DMX clap. On the clap, we don't need all the body, so I'm just gonna roll off with a high pass filter to about 400 hertz. And then just to brighten it up, I'm gonna give it a high shelf at 4K, boost a couple dB. Now when I put it together with the snare, we get this. All right, now let's add the reverb. For this, I went with the Abbey Road reverb plates. Now on the plate selector, you can choose between the same reverb plates housed at Abbey Road Studios. I'm gonna go with B. I like the way it enhances the low mids on the snare, but feel free to choose what works best for you. Now over here, we're gonna adjust the damper, and this is basically the decay time. Right there at four is good, all right? We're gonna leave the EQ section alone, the pre-delay, the drive, we're gonna leave it alone for now, but we are gonna add some analog noise and hum. Let's go all the way up with the analog control, and last is the dry wet control. I like it right there at about 38, and that way we're keeping the attack from the dry signal. All right, so that's the reverb, and we can't do this without the gate, so let's open up the C1, and I have it inserted after the Abbey Road plates. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is give it a fast attack. We're gonna keep the release at 30, and the hold at zero. And then you just wanna take the gate control and drag it all the way up, and then slowly bring it back down until you hear that snare again. like that. Next, take the gate close control, drag this down slightly, just until you hear that reverb jumping out. I'm at about minus 19 and minus 29, and that's gonna make it breathe right along to the rhythm. Here's before the gate. And after. All right, also right here in Studio Rack, I already went ahead and assigned both the reverb wet dry and the gate to macros one and two. And then we can even tone shift the snare and beef it up instantly with macro six right here. I'm gonna show you how to do more of that with torque in just a second. But basically, you've got all the major settings right here for you on these macros so you can adjust quickly and keep it moving. All right, now let's move on to the kicks in the torque plugin. I'm using the classic LM1 bass drum sample. Same exact reverb and gate we used on the snare. But for the kick, I'm gonna go with a little less reverb. And to make it sound even more 80s, I'm also gonna add just a touch of delay. Right there at about 12 is enough. And we're gonna get into this delay effect in just a minute. Right now, let's beep off this kick. Now, layering or adding another sample is one way to go. Another way is with the torque plugin. I have it inserted here, fourth in the plugin chain. Now the first thing to do, let's lower the threshold control and make sure those peaks are hitting yellow. Right there at about minus 51 is good. And now we can use the focus control to find the area we want to shift. Now most of the character is in that low range. Right there at 100 hertz is where things start to jump out. So now we just need to grab the torque control to beef it up. I like the way it's hitting right there at 510, and then we can just tighten up the resonance with the speed control. 
I like it right there at about 33. And then we can bring out a little boom with the trim control. Not too much. Right there at one is enough. All right, let's A-B the kick real quick. Here's the before. And after. Much bigger and bolder and thicker and using just one sample. Let's check out the toms now. Same plug-in chain. This time I went with plate A on the Abbey Road reverb plates. And I also adjusted the gate to better suit the toms. Now let's open up Torque. Now watch the focus area when I play it back. You see how the peaks moved down the spectrum as the toms got lower and lower? Instead of inserting torque on every tom hit, we can automate the focus and torque controls to move right along with it. So that first big peak is hitting right here in the 450 hertz range. But as the tone gets lower and lower, you need a way to focus on each of those peaks as they go down. So what you can do is click on the focus control, and then in your DAW, draw in a little automation starting at the range of your highest peaks. In this case, it's 450 hertz. And then right on the last tom hit, bring the automation down to the lowest point at 98 hertz. All right, now the same thing on the main torque control. Enable the automation, click on the torque control, and then just draw in that slope going right down to the last tom hit. Like that, and now when we play it back, it's gonna shift and enhance right along with every tom hit without losing any of the body or attack. Check it out. Here's the before. And after. All right, let's get into a couple sweeteners right now. Another thing I did to give it more of an 80s feel was I added a clap with slapback delay. Here I added the same DMX clap and I have it going on every alternating snare hit. Check it out. But this time, instead of the Abbey Road plates before the gate, for this, we're gonna use the H delay plugin. Now on the H delay, let's take it all the way to 100% wet. Next, set it to ping pong mode and then Make sure it's set to host. All right, we're going to set the delay time to a 16th. We'll leave the feedback right here at 60. Last thing is to roll off with the high pass to about 75, and the rest we'll leave alone, and now you get this. Now to control the repetition of the feedback, we're going to use the gate. All we need to do is adjust the gate open and gate closed on the C1. Right there at about minus 20 is good. Or you can also just use Macro 2 right here on Studio Rack to cut the delay off at just the right time, just like that. You also have control of the overall delay amount with Macro 4 right here. All right, the last thing I've included in this chain is the Mondo Mod plugin. Another sweetener, and it's great for widening out things like hi-hats, shakers, and effects. Take a listen to these. Right up the middle, pretty stale. So let's turn on Mondo Mod and make a few quick adjustments. First, you want to set the sync to auto. And then right here on the multiplier, you want to set it to 0 0.5. And you get a nice auto panning effect right in time with the track's tempo. Check it out. Now, depending on how wide you want to take it, you have the range control right down here to adjust that. I like the feeling at 50, but feel free to take this as wide as you want for your tracks. All right, I also have the overall auto pan effect assigned right here for you on Macro 7. All right, now we made all these adjustments. Let me play back all the drums with a little guitar and bass so you can hear the final difference. Here's the before. And after. And there you have it, some simple tricks for adding an 80 sound to your drums. Now don't forget to check out the link in the description below. You'll find this plugin chain for Studio Rack free at waves.com slash 80s drums. 
Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to keep up with the latest tips, tricks, and more from Waves Audio. And until next time, thank you for watching.